Uh, now I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Jennifer McKelvey. Uh, Jennifer is a councillor for the City of Toronto in Canada. She represents over 100,000 constituents. And it, before being elected in 2018, Jennifer worked as a professional geoscientist and managed research partnerships at the Nuclear Waste Management Organization and the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. At Toronto City Council, Jennifer serves as chair of the Infrastructure and Environment Committee. And in that capacity, she's taking an active role in the City of Toronto's climate change, resilience and ravine strategies. Uh, Jennifer is going to give her insights from her experience in inspiring the next generation of climate leaders through the C40 Women for Climate Mentorship Programme. Uh, so please welcome. Uh, Jennifer McKelvey. Good morning. I'm Toronto City Councillor Jennifer McKelvey. I'm delighted to join you for the AIPH World Green Cities Conference on Earth Day. I'd like to share with you how Toronto is protecting our environment and making Toronto a more sustainable and resilient city under Transform TO, our climate action strategy. It has the goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, improve our health, grow our economy, and improve climate resilience. Launched in 2017, Transform TO lays out a set of long-term, low-carbon goals to reduce local greenhouse gas emissions. As Toronto's largest municipality, Toronto has an important role in the uptake of green technologies and leading by example. As part of Transform TO, we're transforming buildings, which currently account for 52% of our greenhouse gas emissions. For example, we completed our first solar energy storage project at a Toronto paramedic station. There are 20 solar panels with two Tesla power packs, which will reduce energy consumption by 30%. This is in addition to retrofits to city-owned buildings across the city, including building automation system upgrades, lighting, water, and energy efficiency retrofits, and more than 100 rooftop solar installations. Importantly, we have committed to ensuring our new city buildings are net zero. We've got plans for several net zero community centers underway, and we are constructing our first net zero building, which will be an 18,000 square foot childcare center. As part of Transform TO, we're transforming our transportation systems, which currently account for 38% of our greenhouse gas emissions. For example, the city has released its first electric vehicle strategy and the first on-street EV charging stations are now in place on residential streets. We've also piloted 60 fully electric buses from three manufacturers and demonstrated that they can meet performance criteria during Canada's harsh winters. We already have North America's largest green fleet and it just got bigger with plans to purchase 300 more buses over the next few years. We plan to have a fully electrically charged fleet by 2040 that will save 250,000 tons of carbon dioxide annually. And in my community, we're getting ready for a new micro transit pilot, which will have an automated electric vehicle that will take residents from their homes to a transit hub. As part of Transform TO, we're also transforming our waste management systems, which currently account for 10% of our greenhouse gas emissions. Toronto is a leader in curbside organics collection with one of the highest diversion rates in North America. This diversion of organic wastes means they're not breaking down in landfill to methane, a powerful greenhouse gas. To treat our organics, we've developed an innovative biogas system that will generate approximately 3.3 million cubic meters of renewable gas each year creating a low carbon fuel that will be used instead of fossil natural gases. Toronto is headed in the right direction. We met our commitment to a 30% reduction in greenhouse gases over 1990 levels by 2020. And we know we've got more work to do. In October 2019, Toronto joined more than 800 municipal governments in declaring a climate emergency and advancing our climate change initiatives to net zero by 2050 or sooner. This builds on our membership in the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance and C40, a network of the world's mega cities committed to addressing climate change. To be successful in our net zero goal, we need all voices at the table, and we know that includes women. That's why 
Toronto has joined 16 other cities internationally by participating in Women for Climate, a C40 initiative. Women for Climate is a networking and mentorship program that strives to make space at the table for women and make them feel welcome. In Canada, we're joining Montreal and Vancouver in this exciting program. Here in Toronto, I'm delighted to champion this program alongside the City of Toronto's Chief Financial Officer, Heather Taylor. Locally, we paired up 12 exceptional women with ideas, with 12 exceptional mentors with documented success. Since the program started last September, the women have further developed their ideas and businesses focused on climate action. Some of the ideas focused on decreasing greenhouse gases by further improving diversion of waste from landfill. Have a listen to Hillary's work with her business, Still Solutions. My name is Hillary Scanlon. I'm the founder and CEO of Still Solutions. Uh, we work to bridge the gap between sustainability and accessibility. I uh, lost my vision five years ago and started Still Solutions shortly after because I was becoming increasingly frustrated with the one, inaccessibility of the built environment, but two, the inaccessibility of environmental stewardship and waste disposal. Very rarely are people with disabilities involved in either the discussions or the decision-making processes with regards to how to address it. And as a result, the solutions that are developed are often inaccessible um, to people with disabilities or to people of other marginalized identities. The Waste Finder is a set of tactile indicators that go on the ground surrounding a waste container. They are both visual and tactile and they enable people of all abilities to dispose of their waste in public spaces. Once you implement the Waste Finder in your space, um, you can expect one diversion of waste from landfill. That's also gonna result in savings. One of the biggest obstacles was definitely the fact that um, my experience is my own and the solution that I'm gonna create is my own. Also one of our biggest assets was including people with one diverse types of visual impairments um, in the design process, but people with diverse uh, abilities. Uh, we also included since custodial staff in the design process, often they're left out of the design process. So we really wanted to make sure that every potential user that had the ability to be impacted by the waste finder in some way was involved. By implementing the waste finder in public spaces in the city of Toronto uh, would have a major impact on the community and the city. 22% um, of Canadians with, uh, have a disability. 4% uh, of Canadians have vision loss. So just those numbers alone, um, accommodating for those needs and those individuals would result in massive uh, impacts for the community. Um, the city of Toronto would benefit directly from those uh, waste finder products being implemented because it would divert waste from landfill. Uh, and it would also help them uh, advance their own sustainable development goal efforts. Some of the ideas focused on inspiring the next generation of leaders. Have a listen to Jane's work with her business, Spring Bay Studio. Hi, my name is Jane G. I'm a game designer and co-founder of Spring Bay Studio. It will take generations to build a sustainable green future, but many adults don't know how to communicate with children about climate change in a positive way. Kids grown up with games and we can make their game time counts towards building a eco-focused mindset. When I designed a Facebook gardening games a few years ago, I was connected with the environmental issues. I felt overwhelmed and worried about my children. As a mother, I have to do something. Helping our future generations become green leaders. So now we're taking our gaming expertise to engage school kids in the real world. The League for Green Leaders is a live year-round online competition for kids aged 8 to 14. It's not a video game, it's a competition based in the real world. Your kids will play to learn, play together, and play for our future. One activity in the competition is finding the biggest tree in your neighborhood. 
kids will measure the circumferences of the trees and calculate the carbon stored by trees. Here is another example. This is something kids can do for their teams every day. Our technology can track how far they walk or bike and calculate the carbon dioxide they save by not taking a car. I biked just for 30 minutes and I saved one kilograms of CO2 equivalent compared to driving. Besides playing and exploring in the real world, league participants will be building healthy habitats online in our award-winning iBound games. Imagine your kids searching for the biggest tree. Imagine your kids building virtual habitat. Imagine them taking pride of the CO2 they save. Imagine them competing for the title Champion of Hope. Welcome to the League for Green Leaders. We need your support to launch the first season for the League for Green Leaders. Thank you. Some of the ideas focused on supporting a green recovery and decreasing our reliance on single-use disposable materials. Have a listen to Erica's work with her business, Inwit. My name is Erica Reyes and I'm the founder and CEO of Inwit. I have three passions in life, food, community and sustainability. Two years ago, I became an entrepreneur because of the frustration of not being able to enjoy my takeout without waste. There has to be a better way, I thought. So I started to create solutions to eliminate single-use plastics in the takeout industry. In my journey as an entrepreneur, I have found three major obstacles to scaling up solutions to single-use plastics. One, comfort. But the real cost of our comfort is endangering our ecosystems and human health for a mere five minutes of convenience. Two, economics. Circularity is usually more expensive in the short term, but in the long term, we have a great return of investment and a great impact. Three, habits. Humans, we are creatures of habits, and it's much more easier and rewarding if we are part of a community with a tangible solution. Our system is simple. Order, pick up, and return. You are able to place your order on our platform, pick it up, and your food will be ready in our beautiful, reusable containers. Our tracking system will make it easy for us to know who has the container and when do you have to bring it back. And the sooner you bring back your container, the more reward you will earn for taking action. It's the most sustainable and mindful way to enjoy your takeout. We have built a system that makes it accessible, but also appealing to every single Torontonian that wants to make a change today. A solution that is welcoming and inviting for people to be able to, to choose a takeout that is good for the community, good for the planet, and good for them. Some of the projects align well with the City of Toronto Resilience Strategy. This strategy outlines how we're preparing for the impacts of climate change. And some of our projects looked at how we can reimagine our public spaces for our future. Have a look at Coral's project, Be Open Spaces. Hi, my name is Quarles and my project is Be Open Spaces. In 2018, a major thunderstorm hit Toronto with um, 72 millimeters of rain and 51 millimeters falling within one hour, causing over $80 million in insured damages. And the cost of urban flooding in Canada will cost 6.6 .6 annually by 2030 if no additional flood mitigation strategies are adopted. As we know, Toronto's weather is going to become more unpredictable with each year. Right now is a crucial time to rethink existing green infrastructure throughout the city and how we can tackle stormwater mitigation. This is where native plants come in. Green spaces in Toronto are not created equal. A turf grass covered hydro field is not the same as a meadow of native plant species. When rain falls upon a field of grass, water penetrates rapidly but just as quickly evaporates due to the short root systems. 
On the other hand, native plant species such as milkweed and false sunflowers can have a root network of up to 2 meters and greater, creating greater water retention and prevent erosion. When we shift our thinking of native plant species from weeds to critical green infrastructure, we're embarking on a journey to bringing nature back. By 2041, the City of Toronto will grow to 3.4 million people. With the influx of population, the city's existing parks and parkland will be significantly reduced unless we rethink park to include often underlooked and underrecognized pockets of green in our urban landscape. Be Open Spaces is a pilot program that seeks to retrofit underutilized land and make them pollinator-friendly green spaces and also function as stormwater management and spaces for education and learning. I see my formal training in urban planning as positioning me as a translator of policy to communities and exploring what's possible for their spaces. There are many examples of similar community-driven initiatives because who are the ones facing the most adverse effects of urban heat island effect? Who has access to high quality green spaces? Who are most at risk of basement flooding or even who has the privilege to feel safe in public spaces? I'm struggling with that and I welcome the panel themselves to think with me. After developing their ideas further since last year, this past weekend, the women participated in a pitch competition. Thanks to the generosity of local sponsors, we were able to offer a 20,000 grant to the winning participant to further develop their idea. The winner is being announced this evening live at our City of Toronto Earth Day event. All 12 women had exceptional ideas and I look forward to watching their ideas and businesses continue to grow and evolve. We are thankful for the guidance of the mentors and I have no doubt that the mentors were just as inspired by these future leaders as I am. Participation in Women for Climate reminds us that we are one world. Globally, we know that women will be disproportionately impacted by climate change as gender inequalities continue to exist. The participants of Toronto's Women for Climate program join an international movement that will result in collective action. The actions we each take to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions will make a difference. Thank you for the opportunity to share Toronto's bold ambition to be net zero by 2050 or sooner. And I'm glad that I was able to share with you some of the work that we're doing alongside our great partners in the City of Toronto. Happy Earth Day.